What's up, peoples? It's Gendo here. Welcome back to the Bass Boys. And as always, if you are still enjoying the series, please do go and drop it a like. And this is essentially part two of our transfer window slash Copa del Rey special as we take on Atletico Madrid in the Copa del Rey quarterfinals. Before we get to that, we do have a transfer that we need to talk about. And we also need to talk about the one loan match that we have played so far in the league. As you can see, we're still in first place. Six points over Real Madrid. Atletico in third place, just seven points back. So this is going to be a very tough battle. Not not quite like uh, the one versus two. Hell, maybe it could be like the one versus two that we just had a couple episodes ago because, well, it's the same team. You know they're going to put up a fight. And in that one lone match that I talked about, we took on Celta Vigo, only coming away 1-0 victor. Shabby Gang himself an early goal in the ninth minute, and we absolutely dominated the match in possession and shots and everything, essentially. But we just couldn't put the ball into the back of the net after the first 10 minutes. Rather disappointing there, but a win is a win, as I've said before. I don't care how I get it, as long as I get it. And as far as the transfer is concerned, Martin Muko, one of my Bilbao players, who really hasn't developed as much as he should have, uh, well, really, once Jesus Maria Mateo came in, he was not getting a lot of playtime to begin with, he's going to be sold off to Leicester for a fee of initially $1.8 million, and then there's going to be another $2 million of added incentives added onto it. We don't know if he'll actually get there, but at least we're getting $1.8 million for his services. And he didn't do too badly this season so far. 20 appearances, 5 goals, 2 assists, and a 7-3-0 average rating in that cam role. But like I said, I just didn't see him developing as fast as the other players. So it's better to just ship him off and get some money out of him before he just stagnates and he's worth nothing. A couple of new contracts of note. Inaki Garcia going up from 8000 to 14000 a week adding on another couple years to his contract because, well, he is a first-team footballer for this club now and is doing absolute wonders for the team. So better to just keep him going, uh, extending his contract and making sure that he is welcome at the club. Another big contract extension is Mikel San Jose, and he's taking a massive pay cut to stay at the club. He was on 70000 a week. He's now down to 42, And the main reason why he's taking a pay cut is because I convinced him to stay because I can use him to tutor players. In fact, he's currently tutoring somebody right now. So he, he agreed with me that he felt that staying and tutoring the youngsters was a big deal and was a good idea. So he decided to stay and took a massive pay cut to stay. He's obviously not getting a lot of play time. He's not starting anymore, but at least I know he's there. He's a backup and can do a job. So it's not like I'm losing a lot of depth and a lot of quality when I get to reach him. All right, now let's get into today's match versus Atletico Madrid. Like I said, the battle of the athletic clubs. They're going to be coming out in a 4-4-2. We're going to stay in our 4-3-3, the V formation. The lineup's going to be as follows. Kepa is going to be in net. Lekway, who's currently unsettled because all these other teams are coming after him. He's going to be out the run on the right back. Martinez, Laporte, Aspilicueta, the rest of the defense. Garcia as our defensive mid. Linton Jr. Marino in front of him. Out on the wings, Muni and Williams. Mr. Free Village sitting up top. Two legs. We're playing at home first. So that's a bit of a disadvantage. But I feel like with this squad, we can get the job done. So let's go kick off and see what happens. Now, I did say last time, like with Granada, it's a cup competition. I wouldn't be too terribly sad if I lost it. Especially to a team like Atletico Madrid. They are a very good team. But want to try and win everything that I possibly can, so why not go after it? Oh shit, Inyaki Williams has been injured. Inyaki Williams has gone down with an injury. What is his potential injury, knee injury? I'm hoping it's a twisted knee. I'm hoping that it's not a cruciate. If it's a cruciate, I'm going to cry. So he obviously he's gonna to have to come out. Pablo Hervias is taking his spot. And I am very fearful right now that, you know, knee injuries could potentially damage him for the rest of the season. Like I said, if it's a twisted knee, three weeks. But if it's anything more than that, I'm not going to be happy. And so far, this first half has been absolutely quiet, aside from the Inyaki Williams injury. But with five minutes left to go in the half, here we go once again in the attack. Nice ball out to Muniain. Tries to get it past Almeida, Almeida I believe. Um, yeah, words and whatnot. Zivkovic tries to clear it away. Linton Jr. taking it past his man up to Via Libre, trying to find the spaces in between the Atletico Madrid defense. And it's just not happening. Ihe Nacho coming through. Keppo with a nice, strong save off of that weak, weak shot. And that highlight really seems to be the tail of the half. There really isn't much of anything going on. 
in the form of attacks from either side. So just going to buck up the guy's ideas. I'm not happy with their performance out there. And maybe, just maybe, telling these guys to be a little bit more um, uh, higher tempo, mix up their passing a bit. I'm not going to tell them to hit the early crosses. I'm going to keep letting them go with that. And as far as everything else is concerned, let's go start the second half. And, well, let's see if we can get ourselves a goal out of it. But three minutes into the half now, and it's Atletico Madrid with all the passing, with all the attacking movement. Contreras gets past a man, hits the post, and it's cleared away. Thought for sure that would have been an Atletico Madrid goal there. We are very lucky. Absolutely lucky they're not in the lead right now. And Villalibre has been having a howler of a match, so I just subbed him out for Luis Martos, and now we got ourselves a highlight a couple minutes later. And Yaki Garcia to Linton Jr. Through to Martos, takes a shot. Luis Martos, after subbing him on for as Asie Villalibre, Martos with his third goal of the season, only his third goal of the season, puts the club up 1-0. Let's go, boys. Decent passing to sneak it through the Atletico back line. That was actually the longest way Marti Martos could have gotten that ball. But he got there anyway, hitting it first time, into the back of the net. Good stuff from the club. We got ourselves a lead. As once again, my phone's going off. I don't understand it. In you go, Lekwe. If it's for Lekwe again, come in with a better, uh, better offer than what you're giving me right now. And as I'm talking about Lekwe, Laporte gets himself his first goal of the season. In Inaki Garcia, what a great free kick that was. Let's not take away any part of that. Osorio had to make that save, but Laporte, the first man there, firing it onto the shortest of angles. It's 2-0 to the club, and we're just rolling now. One minute of stoppage time on the clock as the throw-in doesn't really go to anybody in a red jersey, but we get the ball right back. Five seconds left, and it looks like we're going to come away with a nice solid 2-0 victory against Atletico Madrid going into the second leg of this quarterfinal match. Full-time, couldn't have asked for anything better, even though the first half looked really, really shaky. We turned it on in the second half, I guess. It was all about this mentality, switching from control to counter, really turned us on in the second half and gave us the two goals. A good win, boys. And now going into that second leg, I'm thinking that I should probably use counter throughout the entire way through instead of just control. So that's what I'm going to do. But we do have a match in between this and it's against Villarreal. So we'll get a recap of that before we get into the second leg. And before we get to that, an update on the Williams injury. Strained knee ligaments out five to six weeks. It's not as bad as I thought it was, but it's still a bit of a hindrance. He's going to be out for the first leg of versus Marseille. Might even be out for the second leg. I'll have to take a look at the calendar on that, but it's just, eh, it's not good. Especially one of my pacey wingers, and I need to have his pace on the wings. Now, I guess shabby has got pace too, but Inaki Williams, for how much I'm paying him, I can't afford to have him injured. And this time around, the rotation option doesn't work as we lose 2-1 to one to Villarreal away from home. We put in almost a completely new back line. Lorenzo Gallego was in there. Martos, Shabby, Hervias. It just didn't work. It didn't click as we just didn't get the chances. We had majority of the shots. We had the majority of the shots on target. Just could not put those chances away. As Villarreal jumped all over us in the first half, we only got a consolation goal in stoppage time thanks to Mikel Marino, but yeah, this was not good. This is not good. We're still in first place. Don't get me wrong. We're still in first place. It's just this odd loss in between all of everything just seems to be a bad fit. It seems to be bad for morale going into the second leg. Right, so it's time for the second leg of this Copa del Rey quarterfinal versus Atletico Madrid and... Well, the situation at this is Inaki Williams can't play because of the injury. And Inaki Garcia can't play either because he accumulated a yellow card in the last match and that's going to render him invalid this match. We also need to take a look at this match right here. Barcelona v Real is the winner of that is who we're going to be facing in the semifinal if we advance to the semifinal. And Barcelona coming away with two away goals in that first leg is going to really give them an advantage. And then going to play at the Camp Nou... Yeah, it's probably going to be Barcelona in the semifinal. Atletico Madrid coming out in that same 4-4-2 style. We're staying with our 4-3-3 V formation. A couple of changes, like I said. Uh, Kepa's the same. The back four is the same. Gallego has to take over as the defensive mid. Marino Linton Jr. is the center mids. Muniain and Shabby out on the wings. And Villalibre is sitting up top. So, yeah, just the two changes. Everyone else should be the same. Everyone else should be fine. 
That being said, like I said before, I should start out the game with a controlling, not a controlling tactic, a counter tactic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play controlling, or sorry, counter, I keep saying control. It's a C word and not that type of C word. Uh, higher tempo, mixed passing, and exploiting the flanks. Other than that, everyone should be fine. First leg lead is fine, but we need to guard against complacency. And you saw all those greens. I love seeing all those greens. I saw red in there, though. And I think that red is shabby. So hopefully he doesn't get himself into a spot of bother. So I don't like people that like to dissent. Oliver, the corner kick through. And what was I just saying about shabby? Hmm? What was I just saying about shabby? Hopefully he doesn't get himself into a spot of bother. And what does he do? He gives away a penalty kick. Within the first 10 minutes, Yuri Tiamons stepping up, and he pots it. That's 1-0 on the day. It's 2-1 on aggregate, though. All right, hopefully now that we got that out of our system, we can concentrate on our game and concentrate on how we play, and hopefully we can come away with something good in here. Throw in. Laporte to Marino has to play it back. That was a horrible pass. It deflects off of one of my guys. Contreras is running through. It goes wide. I mean, what even was that pass? What we really need to do is to continue to use the overlap, which I currently have, and also pump the ball into the box. That would be great as well. Zivkovic getting it through to Diogo Yota, and it bounces off of one of their players right before the half. Look at this. Well over a minute of stoppage time. Ref, why didn't you blow the whistle yet? It should have been halftime already. But instead, they level the matchup. It's now 2-2 two two on aggregate. And we are left just hands on hips going, what the hell just happened? I'm not happy. I am far from pleased. Aggressively, I'm not happy with the team. What the f*** is wrong with you? And why aren't you playing like you f***ing should? <sighs> I don't have an attacking mid on the bench. I don't have Enchausti on the bench, so that's going to be a problem. Gallego is going to move up. He's going to be a center mid on support. So we're going to go with the 4 through 3 Haven't seen this formation in a while. I'm going to say that right now. You have not seen this formation in a while. So hopefully it would actually go out there and do the business. We're going to stay on counter. Uh, we're going to pop the tempo up higher. Be more expressive. More direct passing. We need to force the issue. If we get a goal here, we get the way goals advantage. That's the only thing that I'm taking away from this right now, going into the second half. We need that away goals advantage. It also does not help. You know, Shabby is still on his 6-3. He hasn't been playing very well. Via Libre on a 6-4. I mean, it might be time to bring Luis Martos on once again, just because the, I don't know what uh, Via Libre is doing. He hasn't been consistent in the cup. Yeah, he's been consistent in the league, but in the cups, he's just been a ghost. He has not done much of anything. And as I'm saying that, my defense is looking like it's not doing much of anything either as it's allowing Atletico Madrid to just walk right through us. Oliver to Ianacho turns around defender, Laporte. Oh, how do you not save that? And how do you not take him off the ball? Disgraceful. Look at that. Both Martinez and Laporte got skinned and both of their ratings just dropped. Oh my God. Shabby, you're off. Via Libre, you're off. And Laporte, you're off. Yes, I'm making all three of my subs. It's unwise, but I need to do it. Everybody's been absolutely shocking. We're going from counter to straight up attack. Absolutely disgraceful play I'm seeing from this team. Zivkovic up over the top to Serrano. He's one on one with the goalkeeper, but Kep is there with a great save. And once again, it's another tale of the tape. We've had the majority possession, and we don't turn it into chances. It's just really not happening for us. Marino's going to be pushed up here as an advanced playmaker. He's going to have to do it. And, yeah, swap those two. Yep, that's what we need. Just push everybody forward. Go the full FU attack mode. And, well, let's see if anything actually comes of it in the last nine minutes. And, well, the answer is no. Because those nine minutes went by absolutely quickly with nothing. So we had a two-goal lead. And then we absolutely lose it against Atletico Madrid. And to be honest with you, they were spotty in the first leg too. Because they didn't do anything in the first half. That first half just flew by with one highlight. And the highlight didn't even go our way either. We were lucky to come away with two goal lead out of that first leg. It's not Atletico. Just 
made a complete mockery of my defense. My defense was a shambles. It was all over the place. Now we need to focus on the league. Well, it looks like we still have a five-point uh, five lead in the league. Real, Atletico, Barcelona all drawing their matches. So that's good. But, uh, and then the Champions League. Focus on Marseille. So that's what we're going to be doing when we come back. We're going to be playing the first leg of the Champions League. We'll do Marseille and we'll do Valencia. How's that sound? Marseille, Valencia, and then in the following episode, Gijon, and then the second leg of Marseille. Well, that was a complete shambles. We were in disarray. And it all could be pinpointed back to that match versus Villarreal. And I did say that I hope this doesn't turn into a slippery slope. And it very, it very well might could. Two losses in a row, possibly could be a third. I don't know. Hopefully we can uh, quell this going forward and look to do well versus Marseille in the next episode. So I hope to see you guys then. If you enjoyed this episode, please go and drop a like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And if you want to leave a comment below on the episode or the series as a whole, please go and do so. I appreciate every single comment that you guys put down. But anyway, guys, I've been Gendo. You've been awesome. And I'll see you next time. Take care and peace out.